All right, hey everyone, I'm in my son's room because the lighting is appropriate for this and I, I wanna just get this video recorded because this has been heavy on my heart and I just wanna open up with prayer and then reveal what, what's been on my heart and then this is ultimately just to present it to you so that you can pray about it, you can take it up with the Lord. Um, but yeah, Lord, I thank you for this time, God. I, I pray for your anointing to be over this video, God. I pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will govern this, this time, God, and that whoever comes across this video, Lord, that you will give them eyes to see and ears to hear, Lord, that you will create in them a repented heart, Lord God, and that you will just govern them. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'll just say, like, for a very long time, God has been speaking to me through dreams and and that's very biblical his word says that he when deep sleep falls upon man he seals their instruction on their heart and my dreams especially as of late have been just very alarming and i feel like i can't i can't ignore them and i and, and I, I have to ask the lord to forgive me because also a lot of times I don't I don't know I'm reluctant to share dreams because you know everything we need is in the word right everything that we need for this our time on earth for our salvation for what we need is in the word of God but he also is revealing something he's revealing things to his prophets and his Bible said the Bible says in the last days he will pour his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy like you guys can go and study that scripture for yourself and then the Bible also describes the Lord God being like an, a consuming fire and then we see in scripture how he has revealed himself in the form of fire and so god is there's a passion behind the lord and there's a you think about fire you can't contain fire and so i say all this before i share what's been in my spirit what god has been revealing to me and, I, and again, I, I say I'm reluctant to share this just because it's not favorable. It's not, it's not fearful. If anything, this will, this will impart the fear of God in your life. But this is not to scare you. It's just to cause you to check your heart, to, to, to do a heart check, to just go before the Lord, which we should always be doing, going before the Lord and asking him to reveal us and to create in us a clean heart. Because... We're still encased in this body. We're still subject to sin and we're subject to death. But because of the Holy Spirit, we, because of Jesus, we can overcome that. So anyway, I digress. Just go and study for yourself. But the, the most recent dreams that I've been having. I will say that they started like in 2019. Um, and then they just become more consistent and I'll just share the, the, the one that I can, the first one that I remember it being so pivotal, which was in December of 2019, where in the dream, which it felt all these dreams that I've had, by the way, that I'm going to share with you have felt so real. They were so real, literally like me talking to you, me recording this video. I even think it was, it felt more real than that. Than this that's how I know it was uh, prophetic or it was a, a warning from the Lord it was something that the Lord was revealing so in 2019 um, I had a dream all these dreams by the way happened like at 5 in the morning and it was I was just walking with my friends we were leaving a restaurant in the dream and all of a sudden this fireball comes right towards us from the sky huge fireball i could feel the heat as it was coming and grazing over our heads and then it struck the city that was behind us i felt the heat and we immediately were fleeing for cover so we fled for cover and then another one came from another another direction and struck the land and i remember us being in a city and there were there was um military personnel in the streets sectioning people off walking down the street with a with a fog horn saying i can't remember everything that they were saying but it was almost like because you have ignored 
this has come. And looking back on the dream, remembering what they were wearing, they were wearing white. It was almost like the judgment of God. This was happening to the land because of their disobedience to the Lord. So we were being judged. Not we, the Christians, just the land, the, the nation. And so it cut to different scenes where people had to go to their homes. They were not allowed to leave their homes. We weren't even allowed. I remember trying to watch certain channels. All the channels were blocked. There may have been maybe the exception of two news channels that you could watch. And I remember one channel being just where they were showing old black and white films. I remember trying to go on the computer, couldn't access any websites, couldn't access Google. It was like you needed a passcode to access certain websites. You needed to have like credentials. And I remember I wasn't even able to contact my family, like the phones weren't working. So this was crazy. Uh, I'm kind of shortening that dream, but then I woke up and then shortly after, you know, COVID happened. And ever since then, <clears throat> I would say within the last year, oh man, I, I've been having dreams where it looks like missiles striking where I was, striking the land that I was in. I remember being in the dream, not being afraid, but knowing that this was this is supposed to happen. The Bible talks about this. Like, I'm not supposed to be afraid of anything. It causes me, Lord, what am I supposed to do right now? Who am I supposed to witness to? What am I supposed to be doing? It's it's not a matter of let me hide and, and seek refuge. It's, it's more so like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? What is my mission right now? It's really interesting how that was happening. But missile attacks and and anyway the most recent dream that i had which was literally a couple nights ago um i was in a hotel with my sister and i remember the the from what i can remember the sky was crazy it was just storm the lightning was doing very interesting motions that it doesn't normally do and just the weather patterns were crazy and so everyone was taking cover and we were just looking out in the sky and I remember thinking, what is happening? Then the sky immediately cleared up. Like, I mean, instantly, there's my baby back there, instantly cleared up. And it was just eerie because it was just a stormy sky literally a second ago. And out of nowhere, it looked like from this side, I'm looking out of the window. Come here, you can come here. It looked like an asteroid struck the land several miles away from us but we felt the effects and and i remember feeling like oh my god this is is this it like i and in my mind i'm thinking in the dream i'm thinking i thought the rapture was supposed to happen before this after the the asteroid or comet whatever struck i remember the debris coming towards us and i i, I remember thinking okay lord what are we supposed to do do we hide do we run and hide or do we just do i just stay here and pray I had no fear. It was almost like, it, again, it was like, what am I supposed to be doing right now? And then my sister in the gym was like, well, let's just go downstairs because we're in this hotel. Let's just go down to, to the gym because it was underneath the hotel. I'm like, okay, let's do that. So we're going down. People are, are panicking. People are trying to go run for cover. And we end up being in this little room. And I just immediately felt like I need a witness to these people that were in this room. So I start witnessing to them about the coming of the Lord and that we're in the end of days. And, um, People were looking, I remember the news was being, was on this TV screens and the news anchors were saying like, oh, South, the Calvary is coming and just, you know, you're going to have to go out and, and meet the whatever. And, and I remember one lady was like, do they expect us to just walk outside um, the gravel and everything dressed like this? And I remember thinking, this is why the Lord said to prepare. And all these things are symbolic in the dream, by the way. But I remember out of nowhere, these boots appeared. So I'm grabbing boots and handing boots to people. But I'm also witnessing that I'm about the Lord Jesus and that I have to repent and just and trust in Jesus because this is it. And um, I'm really shortening this because I don't want this video to be too long. But the fact that I'm having, and I know I'm not the only one, having these very end time judgmental, judgment dreams. Um, and so I'm, I'm sharing this because I feel like God is telling the body of Christ to wake up, to take their post as watchmen, to be in prayer and intercession, to be seeking the face of the Lord, to be living in repentance. Because we see in scripture that Jesus, is, Jesus says that many will come to him in the last days saying, 
Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? Have I not cast out devils in your name? Have I not whatever all these things? And then the Lord says, get away from me. I never knew you. I think there's a lot of people out here thinking that they're safe and they're not. And this is the abuse of, of grace. They think, well, okay, yeah, Jesus died on the cross for your sins, yes. But there's a conversion that happens when you believe. There's fruit that happens when you believe. It costs everything to follow Jesus. He says you can't follow him unless you pick up your cross and die to yourself. This is, I came across Ezekiel 3 and I, this is his mission, the, the mission that God is giving him to, to warn the people of Israel. But I feel like, and it's not, again, this is not a favorable position. This is uncomfortable for me right now because I, I don't want to be that person, but I feel like there's a call to repentance so that revival can come on the Lord's people. God's grace is, is sufficient. Where sin abounds, grace is so much more in his mercies. Follow us. We were never, we were never supposed, we're not supposed to just be comfortable with where we are in Christ. We're always supposed to be pursuing the Lord and, and having a repentive heart. And I'll just read a little bit of Ezekiel 3. Starting at um, verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them my warning. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, that same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I require at thy hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from the wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Basically saying, warn them, so that their blood is not on their hands those that god is calling to warn his people just warn them regardless of if they if they listen or not or not just warn them then it goes down into saying in verse 20 it says again when a righteous man doth not again when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity and i lay a stumbling block before him which is grace he shall die because thou hast not given him warning he shall die in his sin, and his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. So the stumbling block will be great, is, is a form of grace if the person repents. But if not, if they die in their sin, his righteousness will not be remembered. And his blood will be on the person's hand that did not warn him. And then it goes in 21. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin it sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. All of this, basically, Israel at that time was, was they were so into their idol worship. And today, what does our idol worship look like? So many different forms. Celebrities, TV shows, our phones, social media, our relationships. There's so many idols in our lives that we are worshiping, that we are putting before God, before his voice, before his will over our lives. And if God's, if Jesus tells the people who said in the last days, Lord, Lord, have I not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons. It means these people were working, were in the field working the will of God, but they were still, there was something missing, their, their devotion or their repentance, whatever it is. Because remember, God's name, he will always back up his name. He will always back up his name. It's not about the person, it's about the, 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 for the namesake of the Lord, that he is faithful to save, mighty to save. And you can study all this on your own. I'm just doing my part, which is to warn the people of God to turn from their idol worship, which is wicked in the sight of God. The enemy is very crafty in making things that are wicked seem harmless and good and just not important but it's important to the lord it's important to the lord and i i believe that you know clearly we the COVID that was just a prelude of of what's to come and we see in scripture that the birth pangs will become more frequent with the earthquakes and the and the riots and the weather like we're seeing it but if you don't have a worldview, a biblical worldview, you will miss it. God is calling you to, to 
scale back, to seek his will, pray, be aware of what's going on in the world, be a watchman, which is prayer and intercession, and keeping your house in order, forsaking your, your passions and your desires for the will of God, because time is running out. Everything will be tried by fire in the end. Every work of man will be tried by fire, and that, that was built, basically built, um, through the Holy Spirit will stay, but everything else that was built just by your own ambitions and your own things, that won't stand before the Lord. This is a call to repentance, to evaluate your life, analyze your life, analyze what you what you're focused on, what has your attention, what had what what is consuming you. Is it the Lord's will or is it your own will? Time is running out. I think about the ten virgins. Five were foolish, five were wise, this parable in, in Matthew, I believe. And the five that were wise, they had extra oil on their land. They were ready for the coming of their of their bride, of the bridegroom. But then the five that were foolish went to the five wise and said, Hey, can you give us some of your oil? We, we've run out. And they told them, go buy to them who sell. And that communicates to me that there is a falseness, there is a, a replica of what looks like holiness or what looks like power and what looks like God. And it's not these people have bought into the falseness, the deception. So they have to go there because they just they've missed it. They've been living in deception. God is calling you to have oil in your lamp, to be a watchman. And God is so good, you guys like living for God. Honestly, it's not whack. It's not boring. It's not dull. It's what we're called to. And he is faithful to provide everything you need to do his will. He is faithful to keep us. He is faithful to answer our prayers. He is faithful. He is faithful. So don't fall into the traps of the enemy that you just got to follow suit. You got to compare your life to other people. You got to copy what other people are doing. If you don't have enough of this, you're not going to be that. That's a lie of the enemy. God says, his word says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. These are these are a promise from God for them who are following him. If you design your own life, you will experience failure in a way that is, is destruction. You will experience the destruction of that which you've spent your time building. But God wants to sustain you and preserve you and, and give you an everlasting life and hope and all that kind of stuff. So this this message, I know it was longer than I wanted it to be, but it's really for you to just go before the Lord. Let's be nice in these comments. You know, I'm no I'm nobody. I'm just doing what I feel like the Lord is telling me to do, and that's just to warn his his people. And if you don't know Jesus, you can see very clearly that the world that something is happening with the wars in Israel and Gaza and Ukraine and everything that's going on. Even from there's riots in France right now, crazy civil riots. And April 8th, which is my birthday, there's a solar, total solar eclipse that's coming. And we know the Bible says that the, the stars in the heavens will be for a sign. And we know that Israel used to hold another study. They look for signs. And the Gentiles look for wisdom. All right. There's enough proof out there to show you that Jesus is real, that he did die. The Bible is being more proven every day. There's nothing to lose and life to gain. Cr accepting Christ is free. Accepting Christ is free. There's life. God wants to, you don't, you're not going to do Jesus any favors if you, if you deny him or accept him. This is for your, your life. This is your life at stake. And God is calling you to put your trust in Jesus. That's it. Put your trust in Jesus. Don't mind my child in the background. He's just wanting attention. But I had to get this video out. Put your trust in Jesus. For those of you who don't know Jesus, if you've never accepted him, I'll lead you in a prayer. And, and then I'm going to encourage you to find a, a local church in your area and just get involved. Allow the spirit of God, pray to God and like, Lord, show me what to do. And he will show you. Just wait on him. He will show you. He will close doors. He will open doors. You don't have to do anything but put your faith in Jesus. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this video. I know I may have rushed through some things. I thank you for grace, even though my child's back there being distracting. I pray, Lord, for those who are watching this video, who, if they don't know you, God, that you will reveal yourself to them. You just say, Lord Jesus, be the Lord of my life. 
I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and rose again. He rose, defeating death. I put my trust in you, Jesus. Show me the way, God. And Father, for those who are who have been rebelling because it's, you know, they've been in their sin, whatever it is, whether it's it's lying, it's stealing, it's it's homosexuality, it's hatred, it's unforgiveness, whatever it is, God, you know their, you know it, Father. I just pray that you will give them. Remind them that they ha they are an overcomer in you, Lord God. Give them a taste for righteousness. Your word says, those who hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Creating them a hunger for righteousness, God. And I thank you, Lord, for your hand over their life, for revival in their soul. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, find a, ch a local church to get involved. Not, not a religious church. A church filled with the Spirit of God. Be in prayer be in prayer read your read your bible you guys read your bible i'm telling you it's all in there and god will speak to you some of you are already having dreams and visions he's getting your attention and just and just say what you're supposed to say share the love of jesus with everyone you come in contact with i need to be better at that i will ask for a prayer request to keep my husband and our our ministry lifted in prayer um we're here in alfreda georgia we have a small small ministry but just keep it in prayer and um yeah, Jesus is coming back very soon. I know people said that in the past, but we're closer to that more than ever because so many things are lining up prophetically. I mean, so many things. And yeah, just just be a watchman. Be a watchman. Don't be afraid. The Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but there is a holy fear, a holy reverence that we have for God that I believe he's stirring back up in his people to have a fear of the Lord again, to not be distracted with all of these things things all of the things all of the things that we have in front of us but to pursue the lord at all costs go forth you're not alone be empowered be filled with the holy spirit he will show you everything